back to how to the very committee. Um, and let's see, we're going to start committee discussion on S265 from a threat. But before that, I know that our large council um, had um, had a comment regarding S254, qualified um, immunity. Yeah, I just wanted to correct the record on the case um, that the name I butchered. It's Liberson v. Aldrich, and it's from 1987, and that's one of the landmark cases really outlining qualified immunity and references some historical cases over the 100 years before that helped evolve it. But that was really sort of the, the, the first case that really outlined what it was and who it applied to. In Vermont. In Vermont. Excellent. Thank you. OK, so let's go uh, back to this. Uh, 55, and that's related to expanding criminal threatening includes parts two persons and um, joining us joining us is draft 1.2 and we have some um, committee discussion and I believe we're going to have some get some thoughts yeah uh, thank you Madam Chair it's designed to take some time in committee discussion and not away from our witnesses to kind of parse out some of my feelings on the bill and some of the, the interesting emails and interactions that I've had regarding it. So kind of on the record, thinking through some things out loud, um, that's all right. But I think there's a misaligned perception that this bill is, is creating a special circumstance where legislators alone are more important or deserve more protection than than other people. And had a, a number of emails with comments that we think ourselves too highly and create our own rules. Um, but I think in in a large part, this bill addresses something that's not often seen in public office, and that is the really intense scrutiny that's allowed in the public discourse that's allowed, and especially as of the last several election cycles, there is a lot of vitriol. And there's a lot of people that are incredibly qualified and talented and brilliant and deserve to be a part of this legislative process that will not step into that light because of some of the things that we face in this line of work. I don't care if somebody wants to get me about a boat, but I do care if they're waiting for me on my porch when I get home. I don't care if you want to disagree with me and and vote against me or run against me or anything like that. I, this, this bill doesn't create protections for my feelings or the legislative member body feelings. But there's no good way currently to deal with harassment that's targeted at a person specifically because of the job that they do when it's involved in government like this. And especially when I look around at, at the average age of the legislature, the gender parity of the legislature, I have heard more than once talking to people I would love to see fill these seats that for the sake of their family, for the sake of their children, for the sake of, of their own safety, because they might not have a support system, they don't feel comfortable doing that. And that's not because they're weak people or they can't stand up to some criticism. It's because they're very real threats that not everybody in this legislature faces, but I have faced and <clears throat> other members have faced and it, 
objectively is a problem that needs to be addressed. And so when dealing with a moment of public perception of, of designating ourselves as a class above others, I want to reframe that on the record as we do a job different than others. And we should be able to do that job safely. I don't care if anybody within the realm of appropriate behavior wants to engage in any level of political discourse or disagreement. But I don't think people should be afraid for themselves or their families to do this work and not have a, a course of redress that is specific. I think we could patch together a bunch of different statutes that could create kind of a penumbra of, of protection, but that's complicated and it's hard to prosecute and it's not clear. And when it's not clear, action isn't taken. So I've had two minds about this bill, but I'm going to end up supporting it. Not just for the safety that I think the members currently in these seats deserve, but for the fact that the people that I want to see in these seats and I don't. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I um, want to uh, make sure the committee knows that the um, that the network um, submitted written testimony today. Sarah Robinson submitted written testimony in support of this bill. And um, one of the things that um, that she says here is um, regarding you know the threats in, in Vermont. They do occur, and are representative of a global problem. According to a 2016 global study by the International Parliamentary Union, 44% of female legislators surveyed said that they received threats of death, rape, beatings, and abduction. And then without specific regarding <coughs> sexual assault, threats of sexual assaults may not be applicable under the statute because sexual assault does not always result in serious bodily injury. Um, so you're speaking more to that addition, but this was, you know, she says, a 2016 um, study. I imagine that 44% is much, much higher. And, and I, have, I have heard the same thing, that, that the number one, um, when, when women who are thinking of running for office, the, the number one reason that they don't or are thinking not to is, is because of their safety. And we've had colleagues that are, me? It has happened to our colleagues. It has happened. Yeah. Yeah. I, for sake of not wanting to deal with the politics of it, I merely didn't report when my house was shot up. I haven't reported people that will wait for me to come back from Montpelier on my porch to harass me about any number of things they disagree with. And when I say harass, I use that word very specifically. But I don't feel comfortable reporting that because there's no easy way to deal with that. There's no easy way for that to be handled. And I am grateful that I have a support system, that I, I have ways to feel safe. There are people who do not have that and do not have a clear avenue of redress. And there is this problem. And so if we are looking simply as does this bill solve a problem that is currently affecting not just the legislature, but public employees and, and school board members and other people involved in our public process. It solves a problem. And I think that's the fundamental purpose of legislation. So. Yep. Um, I really appreciate everything that Representative Leffler and, and others just said. And I would just also know um, with regards to the bill, I mean, it still has to meet a very high bar of 
our definition of criminal threatening, which is which is not um, that's not an insignificant bar to me. And as we've noted um, many times in our discussion on this bill, and I think also just worth noting that in current law. Um, you know, we already have some ad additional carve outs um, for criminal threatening about folks who try to interrupt the work of the Department of Children and Families. And this is really, it's about providing protection for individual folks. But the additional language here is much broader than legislators, and it really is about making sure that the work of state government, of elections, um, can continue unimpeded. And again, it, that really only comes into play when someone has met that very high bar of, of true, like a, a true threat um, as required in our in our underlying statute on what constitutes criminal <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I agree, agree with everything that's been said, but also just want to point out that uh, schools are suffering from having these kind of threats as well. And, and this also has an enhancement when, when a threat is targeting the school. Uh, and, and I think that's really critical at this time as well. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's broader it, and it hits on some of those areas where we are seeing the real threats uh, and, and having the enhancement for public servants, uh, when the threats are against somebody uh, to keep them from following the law uh, and, and schools, I think those are all very important enhancements uh, for the bill. So I think, yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, this isn't something that, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is more than just a hypothetical for me as well. I mean, the last two years ago when um, Rutland High School uh, was uh, in the process of changing its mascot, and my wife was president of the school board. Um, after a vote to to retire the old mascot, um, she started to receive threats that were just I couldn't I can't repeat them here. They're just so vulgar and vile, and quite frankly misogynistic. And it was really telling that my wife, in her role as as board president, she didn't vote. She didn't argue in favor one way or the other. She runs the meeting. the 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 man who made the motion to change the mascot never received any threats, never received any correspondence about it. The woman who was in charge of the meeting was threatened and harassed to the point where my family had to buy a home security system. And it really affects someone's ability to do their job as a public official. Um, you know, uh, my wife is trying to, to work on various, various issues, various ways to move Rutland City Public Schools forward. But if she gets a request for an uh, interview, with a reporter, she's got to make certain she has someone there in case it's a setup. Um, she has to think about where she parks. Uh, we had someone just a couple weeks ago in the early morning hours uh, shouting profanity outside our house. Um, you know, my wife's an adult. She can handle criticism. People are more than entitled to disagree with her opinions. Um, same with me in my role here. But we shouldn't have to think about our votes and we shouldn't have to think about our public policy um, and what the repercussions are every time our 10 year old daughter goes outside to play. And this is really, and for me, it was really driven home watching the, the harassment of my wife. This isn't just about discontent. This is about people who are unhappy that an entire segment of the population is, has the ability to hold power. This is someone who looked at my wife and said, she does not belong there. And through the harassment, it sends a message that others like her do not belong there as well and will be treated the same. And I know for a fact that when we were looking for candidates for local office in the, in the last, in the past year, there are people who are thoughtful, who would have looked at issues fairly, would have approached um, local issues and, and serving in a very diligent, thoughtful manner, and they just couldn't do it because of the threats, because they felt unsafe, because they thought it wouldn't be fair to their families. So what we're doing here is something that's very specific um, it, to some degree. It, it's not as though we are saying uh, public officials deserve some, some exalted status. Um, but what we're saying is 
People should not be able to use the threat of violence to push entire categories of people who they do not like out of consideration for public office. That's what this bill protects. That's the sort of thing that we need to achieve to make certain that anyone who has a desire to serve in Vermont feels comfortable to put themselves forward at any level. And is this going to solve the problem to a T? No, of course not, because these people are still out there and they're still going to be threatening. But you start to hold people accountable and things begin to change. I strongly support this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So um, I know we took testimony on it one day, but I put in H203, which is basically a bill to um, make criminal threatening a crime against state em state employees or, or legislators. And so I felt strongly about this. I have watched a great colleague have to feel like she had no choice to keep herself and her family safe and not be in politics. And it bothers me regularly that we as a society let that happen. Um, the speaker has had horrible threats. The mayor of Burlington has had horrible threats. People in the Secretary of State's office, when I worked um, in human services, I, we regularly had our staff who worked at DCF offices have to leave the offices because of bomb threats and other threats. It's so rampant that um, I'm proud that we are on the cusp of passing this. And I feel really strongly that um, it's, it's a, an important bill. Do you mind if I say one more thing? Absolutely not. Say I really appreciate the comments that have made, and I just kind of wanted to say one more thing. This isn't this isn't going to solve. I think the the non criminal level verbal harassment that happens. It's not going to solve misogyny. It's not going to solve other barriers to people running. I don't want this to be seen as it fixing all of those issues but I think it fixes the most egregious of those issues with a high standard for what reaches that level. I'm not saying if you yell at me, you're gonna be charged as a criminal. I'm saying if you reach the level of threatening that is in this statute <clears throat> at that point, I or, my, or anybody else that's, that's specified in this bill has a, a avenue of redress. I think there's a lot of really problematic things that are targeted towards certain groups that choose to try and run for office or participate in our local process more than others. Um, and we could be here until December parsing those out. Um, but I would rather not be. But it solves the worst of the problems with a high standard. And I think the rest is not something that has an immediate legislative solution. Yeah, just really quickly, I'm I'm really grateful for the work that went into this bill, and I just see it as as a commitment to to strengthening and preserving our social fabric and representative democracy. Honestly, um, so I'm I'm excited to vote in favor of this. <clears throat> Anybody else? I have to go. So uh, I would entertain a motion to find draft 1.2 of uh, 265 favorable. So moved. Thank you. Second. I think you would. I think that's the clerk. Who's second? That's color out. Coburn? Yes. Donnelly? Yes. Paul Slant? No. Lalon? Yes. Buffler? Yes. Norris? No. No? Yes. Rachelson? Yes. Christy? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. 
Um, let's have it open for um, I think it's just a or so. And then we'll be a reporter. Thanks, Great. Well, thanks. Yeah, thank you.